Yeah, cam wings are pretty roached. There we go. Alrighty guys, what's going on? Good morning. Uh, today's video is a little starting off a little bit on the on the on the downer side of things. Uh, we're actually starting off with a Fox body. I do have the engine for the F100 in the back of it for the fourth time. It's going back to the machine shop again. So what you guys actually haven't seen is I've already put most of the short block together. Put all the I put the whole crank in it, made sure all the bearing tolerance was good, rotated it, had all that stuff set. I was starting to put rods in it, uh, and then I wasn't really noticing. But while the motor was upside down, I noticed a bunch of scoring in the cam bearings. Now I'll show you that once we get down to, to the machine shop but um the previous machine shop there's nothing i don't want to say anything bad about the machine shop that i brought this to however it was just you know probably if i had to guess um a very busy time of day and they were just kind of hustling things around and when they line board this thing i'm pretty sure they used the cam hold to hang the block uh, and it scored up the cam bearings pretty good and they didn't go back and replace them so just something that i think they missed it wasn't really like the end of the world like i'm never going to go there again kind of thing is they've done very good work in the past but we're going to take it to a different machine shop just to just for time's sake uh that should be able to knock it out overnight should be able to pick it up tomorrow morning uh, we should be able to continue putting the motor together so there's a video of me doing all that process that i just said but it's not out it's not done yet obviously because i haven't finished the engine there's short block so but with that being said we're gonna go ahead and fire up the fox body bring the engine down there i'll show you guys the damage once you get there so yeah but this thing's looking pretty good if you guys didn't see the last video of us painting it i highly recommend watching it it's a pretty good one i think it came out pretty good i'm pretty dang happy with it not gonna lie uh it's actually not as orange peely as you guys think so it, it's it's got it's a little bit but from someone like me it's wet sand in a car that looked like a chalkboard when i got it um I can get this thing to look phenomenal by the time I'm done. So either way, looks like a million bucks. So let's go. Nice. All right guys, so here's what happens. So it'll be really hard to show on camera, especially in this lighting. But uh, if I have a photo, I'll overlay it real quick. There we go, now you can see it. Kind of. Yeah, cam rings are pretty roached. So yeah, now we're down at uh, Mesa Machine, Escondido, California. And uh, these guys are pretty good. So we're gonna have them do the cam bearing swap real quick. I have the cam, I have new bearings, so it should go pretty quickly. All right guys, just made it back from the machine shop and uh, we're gonna wait for that for a day. So should be able to pick it up tomorrow morning. So I'll go ahead back, like I said, and grab it. Not too big a deal, it's a little hiccup. Like I said, not nothing, you know, not every machine shop's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes, so I'm not really holding it against anybody, but um, turnaround time on that was literally like one day. So I was like, screw it, I'll try another one. I actually like trying every single machine shop in like San Diego to kind of see what I like because some are better than others for specific things so you know if you go through as many engines and things as I do it might be worth your time to kind of figure out what works best to you um, so yeah it just kind of gives me a different opinion of really every machine shop in San Diego so now we're gonna get into the real kind of part of this video I guess which is mostly this car which is actually burning oil so a lot of guys uh, probably noticed on D cell or basically anytime I rev it when I get off throttle um, the thing kind of poofs out a little bit of black smoke <laughs> And then on my AFR gauge, which I don't think I've shown, uh, on throttle it'll be between 12 and 13. And then pretty much right when I lift off, it'll go 14, 15, 16. And then I've gotten it, put it in third down a hill doing like 60 miles an hour and decel it pretty hard. Uh, I've seen it hit 20, 21, 22 uh, to one pretty, pretty consistently, uh, which I don't do at all. I drive it specifically so it doesn't do that, obviously. Um, but the biggest reason it's doing that is actually because of a oil issue within the intake. So the PCV valve is what I'm pretty sure this is. So uh, we're gonna open the hood and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So I'll do my best to show this. It's kind of hard to show on camera because it's in a weird spot, but in the very back of the intake, uh, right around, it's my salt and pepper shaker. It's kind of just taped in the back. Um, you can see that hose right there, that guy, right there. So it goes in the back of the intake and then there's a T fitting that comes off and goes into the both sides of this intake. The PCV valve that basically pulls all the crankcase pressure out of the oil galley and then recirculates it back into the engine. So PCV, pollution control, whatever you want to call it, that's what it is. And there's a little grommet and fitting. So I'm going to pull the old one out and show you guys what it looks like compared to the new one. All right, so here's what we got on the bench. So these are, this is the old and new stuff. This was the old check valve. So this thing's job, as you can hear, it has a little, little piece inside of it. So as the engine pulls vacuum on load, it's open. So when you're on throttle, it's open. So if it has excessive crankcase pressure, it can breathe it back in. The second you lift off throttle, job of this thing, as you can see, it's flat and then it kind of slips down. So it should pull forward and prevent unneeded vacuum from coming back into the engine when it doesn't need it. So that one was doing its job. However, as you can see, everything's full of oil. This is what I pulled out. I just pulled this out. 
So if I go over to the car, and yeah, looking from the top, I can kind of see there's nothing in there. This is the intake port. There's no screen, there's no nothing. So you can see in that hole, it just goes straight into the intake galley and that's all you see. What you should have had is another screen, which is this little guy, this little oil. This is basically an oiled air separator. Any oiled air separator that you see uh, is made with a like, like metal web mesh kind of deal. And what this does is prevent oil from going past it. It's made of wound up metal instead of a fabric so it doesn't get saturated by oil. Over time, these things get clogged up with oil and carbon buildup and whatnot. Um, so if your engine is down on power or it sounds a little weird or it is burning any sort of oil on diesel for any weird reason, this guy could be melted or blown out or whatever. Um, so this, this is an absolute must have if your car does not have this piece it will burn oil exactly like my car does so like i said i did not have one um i don't know why it was never in the car when i bought it so i don't know when it was removed but it was never put back into place so the other issue so this guy right here which i can just squeeze it's a rubber grommet this one i don't think it's supposed to be plastic but it's it's plastic it doesn't absorb or bend or seal anything so if i slip this guy in here it doesn't really seal at all um i can pull it right back out very easily versus this one when i popped it in it doesn't come back out this one seals very well I, to the point to where when i tried to remove these i'd use both hands and i ended up chucking it across the garage because it was so tight so i'll stack these on top of each other like this the screen goes in first that'll prevent anything from any oil from coming up into the check valve and then i'll have the grommet in the check valve and it'll go back like it like it was so pretty much this was the reason that this car burned oil so if your fox burns oil this is probably why so be sure to check it and change it it's like 30 bucks to fix you can see we have a screen in there now so now we won't just have a bunch of oil bombarding the check file to where it just blows right past it so now we can get rid of this plastic junk go ahead and put this in my t-fitting still fine so there's no reason to change it and go and drop this guy in and then we should be good to go which is rad so all righty our new pcv it's all in. You can see it nice and clean now. Got that line in. It's all fitted up. So I'm gonna go and fire it up, see if it runs any better. Haven't touched anything else. I think uh, my ground on the upper intake manifold needs to be adjusted or fixed or whatever. Uh, cleaned up a little bit. But other than that, uh, it should fire it up and run actually pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what it does. So obviously it's gonna smoke a little bit being there's still oil, leftover oil in the intake from it not having a filter before. So it's gonna take a little bit of driving just to get that burnt out. Um, the right thing is to actually to pull the intake off and drain it. Uh, way too much work, I don't really care. Um, it's been burning it since I've owned the car. So it's just go drive it around, get it to get most of it out and then I'll just change all the plugs and then we'll be good to go. Um, but yeah, so it's not gonna be like a night and day difference if I just change it automatically, but it does smoke less. I look at that clip, it does definitely smoke less than it did. So that's good um, right off the bat. So I noticed my AFRs aren't going nearly as lean either so i know that's working at least but uh you can tell when i first fired up it kind of kind of like burbles and farts and dies so that's my upper ground right here uh when i went ahead and i painted the cow panel uh the one the ground that goes up to the cow and you can see that that vacuum tree those are things that need to get fixed um so i'm gonna go ahead and redo that um get that thing cleaned up and then uh we should be good to go for a little bit so yeah it's running a lot better i don't know if you guys can actually read any of my gauges but because of the the flickering of the shutter but it does seem like it's better because normally when i would go over a hill crest and i would let off the throttle at all this thing would go like i said 16 17 and then it would just creep up to 18 19 and over 20 which was very annoying if I was deselling to a stoplight, like downshifting or whatnot, when I would get to the stoplight, as I stopped, all of the smoke behind me would like fill the entire car and everyone would just kind of look at me and it's just like, yeah, it's fine. It's, not, uh, it's, it's all right. <laughs> this car's been fun. It's, it handles really nicely. You can put it in fifth and just cruise. I'm doing 65 right now at about 1800 RPM. So yeah, right now I'm at 14, 16. There it goes, see it's now it's not, it's holding 15. I wonder if I downshift. Keep in mind it might go a little high for a couple seconds because I still have some oil in the intake, but yeah, it's, look at that, it's holding 15, 16 is as high as it goes. Oh, there's 17 right there. It dropped right back down though. 
That's so much better, oh my gosh. I hope you guys can see that. You can hear my AC cans. I charged the AC twice. And uh, I loosened one of the fittings to fix a grommet that was loose and it popped off and exploded everywhere. So I had to refill it. So those are my cores. There we go. because I would have to throw it in neutral down pretty much every hill to keep it from burning oil everywhere behind me. That's so much better. I can't get over that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love that. Who would have thought? Just a funny little filter, little screen. It's like the size of a quarter and about an inch tall can make that big a difference. I probably wouldn't have said that, so. If you're burning oil on D cell specifically, on throttle is a different problem. On throttle is probably rings or something engine internal, but if it's D selling and it's burning, that is almost always fixable. It could be valve stem seals, it could be burning through the valves or the valve guides. That was the first thing I checked, and this motor had true double springs in it and silicone valve seals, uh, very nice stem seals on it. Everything was nice, so I was like, all right, it can't be that sure enough pulled the grommet out on the PCV and there is no screen I don't know why but there wasn't a screen swapped it out real quick and we are back in business baby and look at this shout out to the proform radiator in this thing I'm at 160 degrees I haven't even turned the fan on fan has not been on and uh, we started driving at what 130 140 somewhere around there I don't know you can see it's slowly going up because I'm not going that fast anymore but I'm stoked, this is fun. And like I said before, this is the car, if you guys don't know, I do daily drive this every single day. Like to a point where when I drove it to school, I was driving at 60 miles a day. This car has a hundred and, or, yeah, so it says almost 98,000 miles. I bought it with, I think, 82 on it. So I've already put well over 10,000 miles on this car. Um, we're getting into like 17,000 miles on this car that I put on it. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with this setup. Obviously it took a lot to get it to this point. But once it's to this point, it's great, you know? Let's do a little rip here up to the construction zone. I don't know where the zone is, so nice. Just some signs, that's cool. Yeah, and it's pulling 11, 12, 13 to 1 on throttle. I will take it. Oh, also these AEM gauges, yeah, they're a lot of money, but you don't have to buy AEM. An external water, oil, and AFR, number one thing you should do to a Fox body. Hands down, the best upgrade I've done to, I've, I've done to this car. nice and quiet in here. I would turn my AC on, but I'm going to get the relay for it right now. Turn the stereo on and it would be really nice in here, but yeah, this is this is cool. Well, I'm you stuck. Know? This thing runs way better. That 150 wheel horsepower, man. Boy, it feels, feels you feel every bit of it, boy, I tell you what. <laughs> uh, I went ahead and I threw on the charge adapter on the, on the compressor. Uh, I have just a little thing of refrigerant. The one thing you gotta keep in mind when you're buying this stuff is you can get ripped off pretty easily. Don't be one of the people that just continuously buys one with the actual like fitting on the top because that's 40 or $50. I've already bought one. I actually coincidentally have two. So I already have this. And a lot of the cans are between 18 and 22 ounces. This is a 12 ounce for $15. The taller ones that come with these are between 18 and 22 ounces. This is 12 ounces. This is 40 to $50. This is $15. So save yourself $30, especially if you're just doing a recharge, not a complete system, you know, fill from scratch. 
um, just thread these things on and then for 15 bucks you can recharge your AC. If you're starting from like no refrigerant at all, yeah, buy the bigger one obviously, but if you don't need, if you're just doing a quick recharge on any car, don't buy the full blown one. Just get the little 12 ounce cans, they're cheap. All right, let's see if we get this clutch compressor turned on. Here's what I found out. So obviously it's charged. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to check was the high pressure switch on the actual or accumulator over here. So that when I put a voltmeter to and the AC is on, I have 12 volts at that switch. When it is off, I do not have any voltage at that switch. I have like 0.3 or whatever. So that's, that's good. That means that's working. So it should be when the AC is on sending 12 volts out to this harness plug right here. I don't know why it's not. So when I check this on the same port, I get like 0.3 volts, 0.6 volts. It's not enough voltage to do anything. So I don't know why between that switch and here, I'm not getting any voltage. So the first thing I'm gonna check right now, I'm gonna grab my handy dandy little fuse plug polar thing. And if you're curious, I believe it's fuse spot six on this car. And this is a 1990, so I don't know what it is in the four eye, but uh, let's see, I think it's this one right here. Yeah, there's seven, this is six. And as you can see, the fuse is just fine. It's not burnt, it's no weird contact patch. So I don't know why I'm not getting a signal off of that. It could be specifically this harness might be junk. I really don't know. I should probably open it up and figure out what a lot of this stuff is and what it does. Um, the clip on the compressor, unfortunately, is broken, which is kind of annoying. Um, it also doesn't quite look like it's seating down all the way. So I, know, I got a little bit of investigating to do, but uh, yeah, kind of annoying when everything's charged and working. If I ran a wire from to the positive terminal and that clutch to a switch, I can manually turn the AC on and it would work. But obviously I want it to work the right way, so it's I don't want to get all ghetto here, but uh, yeah, I'm going to kind of do some investigating and figure out why it's not working. wasn't enough pressure. So if I come inside the car, AC on. Oh, it's cold now, that's so weird. It's stuck on defrost, so I don't have any of the right vents or vacuum lines up top, but I'm gonna go drive it around the block with the windows up and it's hot out, no way. And it's sitting here idling and it's still working that good. So um, I used all of that 12 ounce can. Uh, like I said, the system was empty. So I, th I had like the, just a little bit in it from previous tries. Um, so I'm just gonna have to go get one more of those. I'm still at like 30 bucks. It's still cheaper than buying the large one. And that's 24 ounces total. And I'll probably only use like that much of it. It is charged, but I wanna go drive it around and put a load on the system. Uh, once I do that, it'll probably equalize a little bit. I'll have to charge it one more time. We'll be good to go. But it is cold. It's getting colder. I'm, I'm liking this. This is good. I like this a lot. Hey guys well the daily just got a little more dailyable which is really cool i'm happy with that i have ac it's not burning oil it's actually comfortable and drivable and uh it actually looks halfway decent now so i'm super happy about this the car is really coming around you guys so the only thing really left to do is uh, obviously the quarter window trim that would definitely help and then uh maybe just some little touch-up paint spots here and there i need to wet sand the whole car so probably later this week i'll end up wet sanding it finally i'm um, buffing out the front end getting all the bugs out of it and i'll keep you posted on how that comes out but with that being said i hope you guys want to enjoy today's video if you did leave a like it would really mean a lot to me uh I'm gonna get, we can kind of finally take a break from this car for a little bit and focus on the truck's engine. Like I said, it is at the machine shop. So hopefully in a few hours, I should be able to go pick it up. I'll get you guys with an update once I go grab it. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you guys.